tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi friends, it's very windy today as you can see and hear. And um, today we talk about, certainly not the first and not the last time, about building worlds with houses, skyscrapers, etc. in 3D. One of the leading companies who develop large-scale houses and big cityscapes for computer games and for ordinary movies is called Kitbash 3D. They are distributed worldwide, I guess, but uh, they also have a sort of center well, development team in Santa Barbara, in California. And I can only rec recommend you go to Santa Barbara if you're visiting California. It's such a nice and sleepy town where you can eat properly and um, surf the waves. And uh, actually my friend Mark Sylvester lives there. He's a cook and he was the key developer of Maya, actually. Maya was developed in Santa Barbara in the late 1990s. So it was not developed by Autodesk. Autodesk uh, bought it from Alice Way from. That's quite a long time ago. Um, we're talking about cityscapes today and um, the problems with Kitbash 3D. Uh, it's fun but it's problematic as well. Maybe it will change. We're in March 2021. Well this is kitbash3d.com. Amazing cityscapes. They call them kits. Futuristic science fiction sort of medieval, uh, whatever you like. The pricing is quite decent. It ranges from sort of 50 to $200 per kit. And sometimes you can get uh, one free when you buy two or whatever. Uh, but um, we have certain limitations here with Maya and Arnold. They don't apply to other renderers, but with Arnold, which is the default renderer in Maya, now we do have problems. And that's what I'm going to show you. Now, first of all, let's navigate to kits here. And here, one of the problem starts. For example, it's city street props, no, no buildings really. And you can buy them for $50 instead of usually 99 I guess. But uh, if you want to have... Um, a look at a free one to just to try things out and that's actually what I did you need to navigate this these scenes and for example Utopia okay it costs two hundred dollars so you go back here and search the page again and you have to try several things future slums two hundred dollars until you have <laughs> tried out everything and you find the Neo City. It's a mini kit and it costs nothing. So this is the one we're going to try out. You need to log into, you create an account with Kitbash which is totally fine and then you download it. But, and this is the key thing of this warning and tutorial here, format is not Max, Blender, Cinema, FBX and Object. Well, we could do this. Um, Maya. And the renderer, and this is the amazing part here, they don't provide Arnold as a renderer. Native is the only option we can go for, and native means the Maya renderer. Octane, Redshift, V-Ray. No render map, for example. So we need to stick to native. And now we can download it. The kit is 4 gigabyte, so it takes a while to download and it's a zip file, so you need to unpack it and it's wise to create a new project in Maya. Do you know how to do this? Well, there are lots of videos about this. I did one in the past as well. So create a project and put your kit into that project. So this is the project I created within Maya and uh, this is my Windows Explorer, so I see the files here. I put the freshly downloaded 4 gigabyte native zip in, in here. Now when I double click it, I see textures and 
a, a Maya ASCII file, which is just fine. So I move the textures into the source images folder. And I move the Maya ASCII file into the scenes folder. And while the files are being copied, you see that we have lots of plastic yellow, white stripes, specular, base color, glossiness, normal, uh, height again. So height is the displacement map. So we have lots of map files in the PNG format. Arnold will convert this into uh, TX files, but we're not there yet. In Maya, I now open the scene and it's prepared all right because I created a kit bash kit project and that's where I find the kit bash 3d new cities native Maya file now I open it and I get an error message right at the start errors have occurred while reading this scene that may result in data loss please check the script edit editor for details uh, the script editor is down here and it tells me that the plugin Octane was not found in Maya plugin in path whatever. Well, I don't want to deal with any Octane things and I navigate the scene. It behaves a little bit odd because I cannot sort of zoom in and out. Maybe this has to do with the dimensions. I go to settings preferences and preferences and right in the middle I can change everything from centimeters to meters because we have a larger scene now. This looks much better now, so this is uh, good for a start. We don't see any textures because we need to click the number 6 key on the keyboard to get the shading. And now Maya reads all the textures for these basically 4, 8, 9 kit parts doesn't look very convincing because it does take time until everything is loaded and uh, you might find this sobering because uh, the preview on the website of Kitbash shows amazing cityscapes but when you actually go down here and you imagine you have some people walking and cars running there this might be quite good because you have a lot of detail for example this part here is you can look through the building because you have windows and in these parts you cannot look through. Same here. Lots of details. This is all we have. Most kits in the kit bash portfolio are not much bigger than this. This is a miniscape um, but um, Basically, you will always get this sobering look at buildings. But once you get down on the on the base floor, on the on the street floor, you see quite amazing things. A few renderings I did. Now let's create a light 
and I'm going to create a parallel light because I'm in the Maya renderer, which is the renderer for these textures here. So I create lights and directional light, sort of sunlight in Maya with harsh shadows. And you can just tilt it uh, however you like it. And now when you go to rendering right here, the Maya renderer works like mad. Maya crashes. I have to restart all over. This is not unusual with such a huge file. I loaded the scene again. I adjusted the dimensions so that we're in meters rather than centimeters. And now I want to go to Arnold because I want to render this in Arnold, um, although it's Maya blind textures, as we'll see. Arnold lights, we need a light. Uh, the parallel light is not in the scene, so uh, I will, because we have a fresh start. I use the physical sky, which creates some kind of sunlight scenery. Now I go to Arnold again and I render it with Arnold. Down there you see rendering with Arnold render view. So this takes a while as well because the kit is so massive. But now it's converting the PNG textures to TX files. That's a typical process for Arnold rendering. And that takes time as well. But it's at least it's working. The kit bash support team told me that Arnold shaders are in the pipeline. They want to provide them to us, but uh, they, are, uh, they are not available yet. And we are currently in April 2021. So this is much better. The Maya renderer took, I think, three minutes until Maya crashed. And this rendering was done in half a minute. My PC here is not very powerful. It's four or five years old, but uh, it works with basically anything. And I do most of the tutorials with this PC and not with the slightly stronger one from uh, 2019 with lots of memory, etc. But what you see here is uh, quite interesting. You can get closer to the whole object and see more detail of the blind shaders. Let's have a look at the geometry here, for example, and go to the hypershade. It's this icon here. You can also go to Windows, Rendering Editors and the hypershade. You see that this whole scene slows Maya down dramatically. I need to wait until all the thumbnails are being loaded. So the hypershade really needs to think a lot. A minute or two later, we see the attribute editor of this specific one, the Kit Bash 3D NEC Banner A Blin. Actually, we don't want to see a banner. We just pick one of the normal ones here. The, that's concrete and that's a blind shader as well. So these things are blind shaders uh, with lots of images mapped to the color, the specular color, etc. You see all these grayed out icons here, which mean that uh, we have a bump map, for example, uh, attached to the bump normal mapping node. So for example, when I select this building here, um, well, let's pick a smaller one, a more simple one, this one, or that one. Here I see the UV mapping. The UV editor shows me the UV mapping of this building, the building which I just selected. You see that this is extremely complex. And when you change one of the shaders, you only change one of these details here, which are distributed all over the UV maps. You change only one specific blind shader, for example, this one, which applies to all the windows or half of the windows. You don't really know. You change them to a, an Arnold shader, for example, 
and uh, it does not work properly because the you have to redo all the connections and with so many shaders here this is just a very tedious process to finalize this rather depressing tutorial it's basically a warning uh, I want to select this object here just only I would just want to see th only this object to make the scene a little bit leaner and try out uh, a last experiment uh, it's this object here but uh, it's uh, this whole set of buildings is in this group so I open the group and let me see uh, it's this one okay so I can delete all the others and basically I delete these ones and these ones and this is the one I want to keep tack, tack, and maybe I want to keep the base as well and I delete all those now I um, have a pretty lean object here when I render it with Arnold and you see all that glossiness is totally unrealistic because Arnold is rendering blind shaders and we have a load of blind shaders next thing I want to do in order to get this scene a little bit more lean I go back to the hyper shader now it starts building up a little bit quicker than before and what I'll do now is I'm go to file and I optimize the scene size now that we have much less buildings uh, many of these shaders should disappear optimize current scene size this action is not undoable yes and now it's deleting shaders and I got really much fewer of them uh, nine was sort of 12 um, when I select this object and go to material attributes I see a single blind shader but we actually have more shaders than that working on this building and um, I can show you how uh, we can prove this when I convert this blin shader to an Arnold standard surface shader which is here AI standard surface shader you see that all the connections almost all of the connections are being lost that means we don't have the materials attached to the shader anymore the mapping for the color is gone but we still have the specular color mapped I don't know why that is and when we change the color now to a bright red for example where is that red you see it's up here it is the mapping of it was the proper maps for the air conditioning but now we change it to a an Arnold standard surface color here we can reduce the specular weight to zero and when we render this seen now we see that pretty uninteresting air conditioning setup in red because the mappings are all lost so what we did we selected our object this whole object and with the right mouse click we selected the material attributes now we get um, a blind shader which we converted into an AI standard surface shader and we lost basically all connections and in order to redo the connections you need to go back to the hyper shade and do a lot of new connections and I think if you pay 100 or 200 dollars for this scenery you get an amazing geometry but uh, if you invest another two days just to change the renderer type in order to get proper rendering in Arnold this is just not worth it too harsh well let's see what they come up with in the hopefully near future bye now